Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I apologize, man. I'm, my technology is giving me problems this morning. And um, and maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. I just couldn't seem to get it together. But here we go. Five minutes late. If the Lord is willing, I'm still going to be able to give you what the Lord has for you this morning. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for putting me to sleep and waking me up this morning, God. Thank you, Lord, that um that you uh <clears throat> that you're always with us, Lord. You work things together for our good and in our that you're always uh leading us and guiding us, teaching us, protecting us, Lord God, giving us wisdom, showing us the way, Lord God. You always with you're always with us, Lord. As long as we don't give up, long as we as long as we don't quit, Lord God, we've got it made. As long as we continue to hold on to your hand, Lord, to keep our eyes focused on you, God, we we have the the better. We're on a better side. We're on the 
above, above the two. Now, God in heaven, I pray that you will give your people what you want them to have, Lord. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Give us, Lord God, um, wisdom to, 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 discern, to discern, Lord God, between right and wrong. Give us the mind to obey your word, Lord God. Give us the heart to go out and do your will, Lord, and the strength, skills to succeed at whatever you sent us to do, Father. And Lord, above all things, let your will be done. Not my will, not our will, Lord, but your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. All right, today's scripture coming from Mark chapter um, 9, verses 17 through 27. <clears throat> then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. <clears throat> and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then, then they brought him to Jesus. And when he saw him, when he saw Jesus, immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So Jesus asked his father, how long had this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him, in, him both into fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and empty him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead. So that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. God bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. Um, faith can move mountains, but doubt can create mountains. You hear me? Uh, the father of the child said to Jesus, if you can do anything, help him. Apparently, he hadn't heard about Jesus. See what I'm saying? Apparently, he didn't know that there were no ifs about it. Apparently, he didn't have knowledge that the that that the Lord and, and Savior and the Son of Man, Christ Jesus, could do anything. So that's why he said, if you can do it. Now, um, our life in Christ is based on faith. In some instances, we might say that we believe, and we might even think that we believe, but it's our unbelief that's blocking our blessing. Um, the man, the man believed, but he also had unbelief. He, he, you know, he also, he, he also had some doubt there. You know, he also had he, 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 uh, he had this part of him that believed that something could happen. But he also had a part of him that didn't think that it was it, it could it was possible, you know what I'm saying? And Jesus had to tell him all things are possible for him who believes. And and it wasn't until it wasn't until he he told Jesus, Lord, I believe. Get rid of this unbelief. Help me overcome my unbelief. Toss out the unbelief. Let my belief override and trump my unbelief. And that's the case with us a lot of times. I'm even, ooh, I'm even, I'm even in this case. I'm, I'm even in. That's the case with us most, with most of the time. The unbelief got to be trumped by the belief. I'm in a situation where I, I got a little doubt about something. I got to make a decision on something, and I'm, I'm focusing on toward making decision, making the decision right, decision A versus decision B, because there's a little doubt of the outcome for decision B. I know what decision B can lead to. 
You know what I'm saying? I know how I think and how I would start trying to put my hand in it. I could just go with A and then let God do whatever he going to do. Or I can go with B and then start trying to intervene in, in, in a completely different decision other than rather than A. Then I'll start trying to put my hand in B. You know what I'm saying? I, I I know it already. I know I'll all and I know I, I already know I'm gonna have some 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 negative thoughts about if I go down the road if I choose B. But also there's a there's an aspect of decision B that I could just lay it all on the line and say, God, I don't even care, man. I don't even care, God. You just do what you want to do with it. You know what I'm saying? But how many of us are one hundred percent sold like that all the time all every single decision you say god i i know what i know this is the best decision that that because i know what i well i know god that this you can do the best possible outcome from this decision so that's what i'm gonna go with i'm going with something that's um a little more subtle you know what i'm saying i'm going with something that i might feel and it's and i'm really not led to make either one. I mean, I'm really not, God, God, he's not pushing me toward either one. I'm, oh Lord, help me make a decision. You know what I'm saying? I may have a couple more weeks, but if I, but if I don't choose anything, decision A is going to be the choice because the time is going to come when decision A is going to already be made for me. You know, it's a time critical decision. And Lord, I got two more weeks, Lord, before you uh, put it on my heart and my mind. And so, and, and a lot of times, we don't we don't go a certain route or believe a certain thing because we don't uh we don't know we're not sure about what's going to happen but uh um it's our unbelief that might be blocking our blessing man we we might believe we might say we believe but our unbelief is what's blocking our blessing we we we're not sure about the outcome we're not um we're not we're not 100 percent sold on what's going to take place and what's going to happen and and and, and so and so we, and so we do something based on what we do know. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's what the scripture says. And, and therefore, we do have faith in God. You know what I'm saying? We just might not have faith that that the the system or the people involved in that situation are going to be able to to pull through, or they might not be. Uh, they may not have themselves. In the, in the position to allow God to work through them. So, you know what I'm saying? A lot, some people block out God. So, I mean, if some people, they may think they listen to their conscience, they, they, their conscience, you know, a person who follows Christ, and they be, I'm going to listen to my first mind, my conscience, and that's the Holy Spirit telling them something if they if they are in Christ. and But some people are not in Christ. And so what they do is not based on a, on a, on a, on a subconscious uh, feeling or a, or, or, or prompting and urging from the Holy Spirit, they do something based on the world. And so if though if their if their hand has something to do in our situation, we might not want to allow it to go down. And now I just I was just scripture yesterday. Uh Paul says uh brother goes against brother and you do it in front of unbelievers. You know what I'm saying? So he's saying that if you can't get if you if you a Christian and he's a Christian and you're going to take your matter in front of an unbeliever or a person who's not a Christian, how can you expect a godly decision to, to be a godly judgment to be made between you two? And so therefore, when I'm not uh when I'm not dealing with godly people, I'm sort of hesitant in 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 my decision making because I don't I, I don't I don't necessarily see where God is going to work in them. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not led by the spirit of God. It's not doubting God; it's doubting people, doubting the systems and the and the uh, and the and the things and the, and the standards and the and the ordinances that are in place. You know what I'm saying? That's what there were. That's where my doubt is. I don't place my faith in man; and my faith is in God, and uh, and so that could cause some doubt in, in what's going to happen down the line. But I do know God's going to work all things together for my good. You know, so I don't make reckless decisions. I don't make I don't go, I don't, I don't do things without consulting with him and anything that's not done by faith in Jesus Christ is a sin. That's what Romans chapter 14, verse 23 says. And Paul, uh, when Paul says this, it, you, you, you can, you can misinterpret it. But what he's saying is 
if you doing something, if you're, no matter if you start in a homeless shelter in a soup kitchen, if your faith is placed in someone else besides Jesus, something else besides the Lord Christ, besides the almighty father, then what you're doing is in vain. It's in sin because you're not, you, what you're doing now, you might think you're doing some good for the community, but you're doing it in the name of your of your idol or your God is sin. You might be doing it for money. Ha! Huh. You might be doing it if you if if you if your faith is not in Jesus, whatever you're doing is it, it has no merit. See what I'm saying? Now God uses some people, and I and I can't explain that to you better than the scripture says it. But because Paul because Paul says it, he says it, and I have to I have to believe that that's that's how God feels about the subject. Because all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's, it's God breathed. Now it don't necessarily mean that Paul was always uh inspired. It just means that the words that 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 Paul gave to us were inspired by God. Def God Paul definitely did some things that were not inspired by God sometimes because he was a man. He wasn't perfect. None of us are. And so we can we can have our words inspired by God and we'd be out of line with God at other times and that's that's not scripture and that's not biblical uh and, and, and so when we when we when we go down the road of doing something and and it's not based on our faith in jesus christ then the scripture said that that's sin whatever is not of of faith in christ jesus is sin you know what i'm saying so we must first have faith that jesus can do anything we must first have faith that jesus can do anything the man, the father said, if you can do it, he already, it's, that shows the lack of faith when you're saying, if you can, God, God, if you can do this, God, would you do it? I never say, God, if you can do this, would you do it? Because I already know that he can. And I also know that even if he does not do it, he's still able. When they, uh, when they, when, 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 when they threaten to throw uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and in uh into the uh the the burning fiery furnace they said listen here old king nebuchadnezzar <laughs> we have no need to be concerned about you and what you saying if you want to throw us in the fire god will deliver us and if he does not deliver us let it be known old king he is able to deliver us see what i'm saying they they they, they show faith they said we know that god can even if he doesn't he know it we know he's still able to do it. So we must first have faith that Jesus can do anything and everything with just a speak of a word. He can speak the word. Jesus, at one point, Jesus said, you have been made clean by the word which I have spoken. If Jesus can make a person like you clean, mm, think about it, you. If he can make a person like me clean just by the, speaking the word, speaking that word to my heart, to your heart, to our spirit, don't you think that he can speak something and make it happen on this earth? Huh? <clears throat> and once once we first believe that Jesus can do anything and everything just by a speakable word, then the second thing we must do, we must know that he is willing to do what's best for us, his children. God is willing to do what's best for us, his children, because he has our best interests in mind. So whether it's a healing or a miracle or a delivering from sickness or promotion or get a job or get something materialistic whatever it might be god knows what's best for us don't let anybody trick you into thinking that god let something bad happen to you because he hates you because he don't like you because he couldn't do anything about it it's not true if god allows something to happen guess what it's for his glory it's and it's his decision that he allowed he gets to say the earth is the lord's and all this fullness thereof all the things and all the people on the earth. Read Psalm 24. That's verse 1. We belong to God. Everything belongs to God. We might take things and do things our way or do or use things in the wrong manner or a manner that's uh, uh, not, not becoming of God, but it doesn't mean that God doesn't still own everything and everyone. No matter how you act, you still belong to God. Now, in the end, if you don't surrender to him, yeah, he he might have something for you that you don't like to do, that you don't want to be a part of. So be my be so surrender to him. Now be mindful. I didn't read verses eight. I stopped at seventeen. I didn't read eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 
maybe 21, but he talks about prayer and fasting. Be mindful. Sometimes it takes prayer and fasting to show for you to show God that your faith is in him and not in the world and not in our not in your flesh. Sometimes you got to show God that your faith is in him, not your flesh and not the world. And you can go without food. You can you can go you can go man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what helps you going. And I mean, and I think that if you if you if you're doing it for the right reasons, not just for show or not just to uh, support to to uh, support a group of people who who going through a phase of prayer and fasting. I think that if you're doing prayer and fasting because you want to hear from God clearly and you want because I mean, sometimes God might be saying the whole time, speaking, telling you what he's going to do about your situation, but you're just not in a position to hear from him. And so therefore you're doubting him. If you got doubting God, if you if you're fearing the outcome or circumstances or you don't know uh, what to do, thank you, Lord. You might just have to pray and fast until you hear the solution from God. He may not solve the problem, but he will definitely give you the solution until he gets ready to put something in order. Because your problem might be, Lord, I want to be a billionaire. Well, I'm not going to solve that problem for you, what God might say. I'm not going to make you a billionaire because once you become a billionaire, you're going to do this and do that. You know what I'm saying? So he might not necessarily, he might not, he may not necessarily do things the way you want him to do it, but still do all things in faith with your faith placed in him. And if you're not hearing from him in the manner that you want to hear from him, you may have to deprive your body of some things that may be distracting you or getting in the way. You know what I'm saying? You may have to get yourself in a position where you can hear from God. Then you'll see clearly what he's showing you and you'll hear what he has to say about your situation or the situation of whoever you may be praying for. Like the father wanting his daughter healed. If you want somebody healed and you haven't seen their healing and you haven't heard yet, make sure that that person has faith that God can do it. And make sure that you have faith that God can do it. Because doubt can put a mountain on this barrier in your way, blocking you from God's blessings. Amen. Father God in heaven, it's in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the word this morning, God. I know, God, that uh, I usually get frustrated and irritated and distracted from technology, God. But I thank you that you allow me to, to walk through it, Lord God, without, without, without it throwing me off course, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for strength. I thank you for peace. I thank you for uh, a, a calm mind, Lord God. I thank you, for God, for for your, um, a sober mind. God, help us all to be who you want us to be, Lord. Help us all to live according to our faith and to do everything in our according to faith, Lord God, and to live according to faith, Lord God, to speak according to faith, Lord God, to think according to faith, Lord God, to breathe according to faith, Lord God. And God, for those who have doubt, those who have fears, and those who have unbelief, I pray, God, that you will help them to overcome, that they may see your glory, Lord God, and that they may see, Lord, that you are the one and only, the most high God, creator of everything, and that you have it all right there in the palm of your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. That's it for Morning Cup of Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you.